along the tapajos. Written by Fernando Vilela and translated by Daniel Hahn. We always wake up real early. We have banana porridge for breakfast, and when we hear the motor of Jay's boat in the distance, we grab our knapsacks and race over to the ladder. It's time to go to school. Bye, Pa. Bye, Ma. Bye, Titi. Titi is our giant tortoise. Living on the bank of a river is amazing because on the way to school there are so many animals. Me and Jay love playing with the alligators. Jay says there are lots of big creatures under the water that we don't even see and that they hang around real close to us just waiting for somebody to jump in. When the porpoises appear, Ine makes a big fuss about them and they leap around and put on an amazing show. The boat takes us across the whole village. Is there some kind of celebration at the church tomorrow? I ask Jay. Yes, he answers. There are going to be eight weddings. The priest has come up from the city and he's only staying two days. Finally, we get to school. At the end of class, the sky turns dark. Winter's come, somebody shouts. Here in the state of Pará, we only have two seasons, summer and winter. In summer, it's very sunny, it's very dry, and the river gets so shallow you can walk across it. But in winter, it rains a lot, every day, non-stop. Look at that rain! We head back home in a downpour. Jay takes everybody. The church is empty now, and the oxen are getting onto the boat, ready for the big move. Ma and Pa have already taken everything out of the house and put it in Uncle Pedro's boat, even my guitar. Hey, be careful with that table! Get yourselves ready, kids! We're leaving in ten minutes! It's like this every year. When the first rains come, the whole village moves. People take everything, stools, tables, chickens, oxen, hammocks. The only things they leave behind are the houses themselves. Many hours later, the rain stops and we reach dry land. We unload everything from the boat and put it on the ox cart. We still have a long road ahead. In the middle of the rainforest, Pa always finds a good spot, someplace sunny and close to an igarape. That's a kind of waterway. Me and Ine arrange our things and the food while Pa and I fetch wood to build our house. After the walls have gone up, the women gather a load of straw to make a roof which we tie together nice and tight so that not a drop of water will come in. That's when Ine realizes we've forgotten someone. Ma, she cries, we need to go back for Titi. Too late now, child, says Ma. Not till summer's come again. That night, Ine is sad. Titi's going to starve, Kawa, she says to me, and he doesn't know how to swim. I wish we could go fetch him. So I think for a moment, and then I have an idea. Hey, I've got it. Let's sneak out right now. The sun is just starting to rise as we untie the boat. We row all day long. At the end of the day, we arrive at the village. When we reach the house, Titi is alive on the roof. But behind him, there's a giant anaconda. Don't go, Kawa, cries Ine. The snake's going to eat you. I've got to save Titi. He's going to die, I say, climbing up onto the roof. I don't know how it happens, but when I jump back into the boat with Titi in my arms, the queen of the jungle gets all tangled up. That's how we save Titi. He's happy, and we are even happier than he is. Of course, we don't know how mad our parents are going to be when they see us. 
the end.